How did this college student find a loophole to score him a $35 million fighter jet for just $700,000? The year is 1996, and the soda wars are raging. Pepsi needed something huge to compete with Coke, so they rolled out their biggest campaign ever. The rules were simple, drink Pepsi, win points. And for 7 million points, which equaled $700,000, they offered a Harrier fighter jet. Clear as day, with no disclaimer. Although Pepsi thought the absurd price was set high enough to suggest it was a joke, 21-year-old John Leonard viewed it as an obtainable goal. John convinced his close friend Todd Hoffman to assist him with financially supporting it, while the 21-year-old worked up a plan to win the ultimate reward. They first calculated it would take roughly 1.4 million 12 packs of Pepsi to obtain 7 million points, making the cost without labor and storage fees around $4.3 million. This led them to wonder if it was even worth it. But then, John found a loophole that stated you can buy Pepsi points for 10 cents a piece as long as you've bought a minimum of 15 points. The adventure has the green light now, and John mailed the check for $700,000 straight to Pepsi. Pepsi almost couldn't believe someone took it seriously, but they did send him a reply and said John could keep the money and they will ship him the model from the commercial. But John was adamant, he wanted the jet. After a few months of back and forth emails regarding receiving the jet, Pepsi was fed up in explaining that it was a joke and executed a plan to sue John in federal court in hopes that John would back down. But John decided, well, if they're gonna sue me, we need to sue them. This now set the stage that John meant business and he was serious about his jet. While this was going on, Pepsi simultaneously changed their commercial offer from 7 million points to 700 million, which would equate to 70 million dollars, high above the price of the jet's worth which was 37 million dollars. Then they changed it again by adding just kidding in parentheses. With two separate revisions, John felt Pepsi was admitting they were wrong. 10 months has passed since John first saw the commercial, and Pepsi now wants to hold a settlement conference. During the conference, they offered John $750,000, possibly to go up to a million bucks. John was ultimately the decision maker, and when his lawyers asked, what do you want to do? John said, I want the jet. They were seriously outgunned by Pepsi's lawyers and needed to bring on a heavy hitter. That's when they hired Michael Avenatti. Their plan was simple. Free press about John's cause and story will be the right amount of pressure needed for Pepsi to make a real play. Press outlets would call John nonstop for hours as John would pick up the phone and tell his story. This led to TV time and news outlets running the story weeks on end. Chief Pentagon spokesperson Kenneth Bacon went on air to announce that the Harrier jets hasn't been demilitarized yet, therefore a civilian could not obtain it. But this didn't matter, because John wanted the jet. A few days later, John gets a call from a person by the name of Victor Miller, who claimed to have been hired by Pepsi's ad agency insurance company to find and acquire a Harrier jet in exchange for $200,000. John's accomplice, Todd, thought this was all BS, but John wanted the jet. So he decided to meet Victor, alongside attorney Michael. When they pressured him about the jet, Victor couldn't bring anything forward, so ultimately, Victor Miller was a bust. It's now been three years since John first saw the commercial, and pressure was at an all-time high. He needed a game plan to end this thing for good. That's when John hired on another heavy hitter, Larry Shantz. John and his team felt that what was considered, quote, a reasonable reaction to the commercial should be decided by everyday ordinary people. They set up street interviews asking students, the working class, professionals, and everything in between whether or not John deserved the jet. This is something that reflects society better than any highly educated judge sitting behind a bench. But this would all get shot down when Pepsi successfully convinced Judge Woods to grant summary judgment, meaning the case would be decided before it even gets to a jury. This meant that they couldn't rely on the emotional sway of a jury who might see the case as big business screwing over the little guy but instead had to employ cold hard facts and legalities. Ultimately, Judge Wood's decision stated that no objective person could reasonably have concluded that the commercial actually offered consumers a Harrier jet, claiming that no school would make parking space for a fighter jet, and criticized the commercial for the pilot not wearing a helmet. So even though the original commercial had no disclaimer, Judge Woods didn't see it as false advertisement because she believed that most people wouldn't conclude that it was a real offer in the first place. Although John never got his jet and missed out on all settlement offers, the Harrier jet has since been demilitarized and is now worth around $1.5 million. So if the marketing budget allows it, I think this would be a brilliant marketing opportunity for Coke to buy the jet for John. Let's get the kid the jet. 